Welcome to Uncle Bonte. I want to ask you a question, right? This is a, a cup on tea with a question for pondering and discussion and debate. However, that is going to happen, I'm not sure, but let's uh, have this question out. So, as I went walking this morning down to the school and I'm on my return after dropping on Far Bjog to the school, I was listening to Isaiah, and I'll get more into that now in a moment. But the thing that really struck me is the topic of grace. And how it is that it is one of the virtues, if not the virtue, of the Christian faith after love. And what it is to live in a gracious society. A society built on love, on the virtues of love and grace. And the question then that comes to my mind is this. And this is what I want to put to you. Because this is a sort of conundrum that I have at the present moment. As people we love to sit down and talk about the state of the world. And how things have got and what's going on in it, and all the stuff that's taking place, and it's not the same as when we were growing up as young fellas, and all that sort of stuff, and it isn't, far from it, but so the question I want to put to you, for you to think on, and I'd love to you get your feedback on it, is this, so if you live in a society that encourages free will, freedom to think, and is based on the Christian virtues of love, grace, mercy and forgiveness, is the end result lawlessness when belief in Christ is exchanged for a dolly mixture of expressions of freedom of thought? Now, do you want me to repeat that question again to you? So if you live in a society that encourages free will, freedom to think, and is based on the Christian virtues of love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness, is the end result lawlessness when belief in Christ is exchanged for a dolly mixture of expressions of freedom of thought. You see, when I look at the West, it seems to be imploding right now. That's the conversation that many people are having, that the West is imploding. And that Christendom is gone. Kick to the margins. Kick to touch it is. Kick to touch. And Christ with it, for that matter. And so we have a society that practices pluralism. It practices everything and anything. And... But it's still based, Tom Holland goes and says, still based on the soup of Christendom in which we all swim. That's his quote. So if the soup of Christendom are the virtues of love, grace, mercy and forgiveness, what is the end result? What is the end result of grace when it is extended to an unbeliever in Christ? What is... The end result of grace in a society where people no longer care for the one who is the giver of grace. Jesus Christ came to this earth with grace and truth. John 3.17 goes and says that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. And so we go and say, look, Jesus Christ doesn't condemn anybody. The whole point was that Jesus Christ didn't need to condemn anybody because everybody was aware under the law of Moses that they sinned and needed to get right with God, that they were in fear of eternal punishment. But in today's society, that's even questioned. Oh, that's only tales from the Dark Ages, Nigel, tales from the Dark Ages. You know, you really need to get enlightened. Really. I think the question that needs to be asked is the one I've just asked. Well, what's the answer? That's the thing. Paul goes and says that, you know, because grace abounds, should I sin all the more? Absolutely not, he goes and says. But then again, hang on one moment. Paul was someone who knew what it was to be a very sinful man, to be a murderer, to be a blasphemer, to be one who persecuted other people, 
to one who was saved, redeemed and set free by the person of Christ. So he was invested in Christianity. He was invested in the person of Jesus. He was invested in the propagation of Christendom. So that's a very biased opinion, is it not? You see, that brings me back to Isaiah. And this really hit me as I was listening to it. I had to read it and dig into it then. Because I think as I read it and dig into it, yes, we have the solution to the problem. And yes, we live in a society today that is built on love, on grace, on forgiveness, on mercy. Christian values because of what Christ has done for us. But this is what Isaiah goes and warns. And remember, he's writing to the people of Israel. Chapter 26, he goes and he says this. My soul yearns for you, Lord, in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. Why? Why is the question? Here's the answer. When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. Note that. So he's saying when God's judgment comes on the earth, people learn righteousness. But when grace is shown to the wicked, they do not learn righteousness. Our grace is shown to the unbeliever, the one who despises God. They don't learn righteousness. Even in a land of upright Sorry, even in a land of uprightness, even in a land of uprightness, they go on doing evil. Why? Because they benefit from those virtues of grace and mercy. As Paul said, they're just so, they're sin abounds. They can just do whatever they like. That's what they think. There's, there's no recourse. There's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to fear. And so that brings me to my question. He goes and says, and do not regard the majesty of the Lord. So is it that in a world full of grace, love, mercy and forgiveness and freedom of expression and freedom of thought and free will and the right to choose Christ is the end result of that then lawlessness? Is the end result of that evil? Is the end result then that due to that Grace abounding. People just take advantage of it to do whatever they want. Isaiah seems to think so. What do you think? Let me leave you with that question again to chew on as you have go through your day. So if you live in a society, by the way, which we do, that encourages free will, freedom to think, and is based on the Christian virtues of love, grace, mercy and forgiveness. Is the end result lawlessness? And when belief in Christ is exchanged for a dolly mixture of expressions of freedom of thought. You see, the one thing that is not mentioned here at all is this. The one thing that is not mentioned is God's justice. But we live in days of grace, in the dispensation of the Spirit of grace. What does God's grace truly mean to you? Let me leave those questions with you.